Hi there folks, my name's NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 14th of July for another exciting episode and we're going to get straight into it with the release from Godzone of their re real New Zealand Christchurch airport. So, um, the guys are a... <laughs> the, 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 yeah, okay, the... The, the name of the company always gives you a bit of a chuckle, but you kind of admit, you kind of admit it that they've got a pretty good um, track record producing some very high quality content for New Zealand. And of course, yeah, being a New Zealand company, that's what they specialize in. And at this, as far as I'm aware, all they do. Anyway, at this time, they've released their rendition of the Christchurch International Airport. Um, so they've come through and gone to here now. This company sort of goes, comes around for me for a little bit, um, sort of comes around uh, every now and again. Um, th they dropped off my radar a few years ago and they've come back and actually, surprisingly enough, I didn't realise that they actually used a Kickstarter to actually sort of help fund their project, um, which I have mixed feelings about. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I have mixed feelings about using it. But anyway, um, they are a small developer, so... Anyway, but as I said, I'm going to leave that one go, and we're going to focus on the product. But the product looks absolutely spectacular, it really does. Um, so this was, uh, is a highly detailed rendition of um, Christchurch International Airport. Um, it's been released only as far as, is, is, as it has been released for all platforms. Um, however, at this time, the first round of releases come for just prepared V3 and V4. Now, this is a highly detailed rendition of the airport as it appears uh, at the start of 2019. Uh, it is fully integrated um, with um, over 7,000 square kilometres of photoreal scenery, as long with the uh, city of Christchurch itself and Christchurch International Airport. It supports full implementation of animated jetways controlled by SODE, uh, along with a custom t uh, elevation mesh has been included for the airport and the airport surrounding areas for all of the photo scenery area as well. Um, it is is also fully compatible with Orbix's New Zealand South Island, which is great. And also for those of you uh, who use GSX, it is supported, uh, does support GSX various features with an any file included and support as well. Um, there is also plans, as I said, it does support, the, it is going to support all of the full ESP range, including FSX. Um, but at the moment, it is just for prepared V3 and V4. Um, and there is potential for it to come across onto other platforms in the future. But for now, uh, we are looking for the ESP platforms available now coming in at 25 five US dollars or your original equivalent available from Godzone. Yeah, continuing on with other ESP platform releases or other prepared uh, ex prepared exclusive releases. The guys over at FS2 Crew have come out with their rendition uh, or their uh, update or rendition update. I don't know. What do you call it when you simulate a multi-crew for a program by uh, a program? Is it AI? I don't know. Uh, so they've released their product for the FS Labs A320 Airbus edition. Uh, now, this product, as usual, comes with their really high quality content allows you to simulate the multi-crew environment um, of the modern airliner. Uh, this one is, focuses specifically on doing it for the Airbus A320 and A319 uh, to allow you to work with a real flight crew um, instead of just having to fly by yourself, as I suppose it were. Uh, now, it's available with, um, with a design based off of a wide range of Airbus flight manuals, quick reference handbooks, uh, and other airline procedures. Uh, for, can allows you to take on the role, uh, various roles in the cockpit, whether you want to be pilot flying or pilot monitoring, um, and whether you want to be on the left hand or right hand seat. Now this comes through. Uh, it comes through. It's available in two different editions. The standard edition, which is just the, which is uh, for the uh, the content for the Airbus, um, or the uh, the captain set, which also include a unlocked version of the RAS Pro uh, software from uh, FS2 Crew as well. Um, I'll be honest, I probably won't be getting it because I don't fly tube liners, but if, for those of you who are interested, uh, this is a, they're a great company, they make great products. Uh, they're also offering a five euro discount for all current owned FS2 crew product owners, um, just with a coupon code, which you can see on the screen there, available now, uh, coming in at 45 US dollars, or your original equivalent, available now from FS2 crew. Continuing on with ESP platform releases and the guys over at Malaysian Flight Sim Group have come out with their latest release and, and I always love reporting on these guys because they make content fairly affordable but they make it across for not only the ESP range in one installer but also for FS9. Guys never stop like just, you just guys are great. You guys are awesome. Anyway, um, okay, so in this release they release another one of their Japanese airport releases, uh, and this time for Kaitak 
Kaitakushu, uh, Kaitakushu Airport. I'm absolutely certain that I've got that wrong. Uh, also apparently known as um, <laughs> oh, uh, Kokoromina Miniami Airport. I, I just, please somebody just tell me how to correctly pronounce it in the comments down below. Anyway, um, so this is a uh, airport that was built on an artificial island in the Western Sito Inland Sea, uh, about three kilometers from the main city of Kita Kitayoshu in Fuyoko province in Japan. Uh, so this is a highly detailed airport rendition of the airport as it appears at the end of 2018, um, includes a full implementation of photo reel for the airport and surrounding area. Custom ground polarity, custom terrain mesh for the airport and surrounding areas has been included because the area is built on a custom uh, man-made island. Uh, does is also supported with a variety of static aircraft, static uh, ground service equipment. Static jetways does also support GSX Level 2 air jetways as well and full implementation of PBR and dynamic lighting. So dynamic lighting for prepared V4 uh, and PBR for 4.4 and above. Uh, there has also been a note here that it has it is only tested with uh, default scenery. It has not been tested with uh, uh, FTX uh, Orbix uh, or other um, mesh or other terrain add-ons as well. So, which is a bit odd, I'll be honest. Like, you know, it's, it's all they ever have to support is just the default. Um, but considering that, you know, let's be honest, FTX Globals can pretty much become the default scenery um, for everybody. It's sort of a bit interesting that they've chosen not to to, uh, to test against that. But anyway, otherwise, if I wanted to pick this one up, as I said, this one's available for FS9, FSX, and uh, prepared in all its various forms. Forms available for 15 US dollars or your original equivalent available from Sim Market. Moving out of the ESP world and moving into the X-Plane 11 world, the guys over at Carinado have uh, brought across their Dasso Falcon 50 from the ESP platforms over onto X-Plane. And they come across with their usual high quality work, uh, looking absolutely gorgeous with its 4K PBR texturing uh, throughout the interior and exteriors as well. Uh, full implementation of, of, of variety of avionics systems including the cust their custom ProLine version of the ProLine 21, full integration of the default FMS uh, from Laminar as well, custom autopilot with detachable pop-up panel as well, full infant and support for rain effects as well which I didn't realize that X-Plane 11 supported, must be a third-party plugin that's come through with that one, full in implementation of support of the FMOD plugin, uh, full support of the X Reality XP's GTN 750 panel as well, full and uh, optimization and extensive VR support Full implementation of support, as I said earlier, of uh, PBR as also supporting of HDR lighting uh, and full modeling of a variety of custom systems for the aircraft as well. So looking pretty damn amazing, pretty damn awesome. Uh, can I just take a moment as well? I know a lot of people keep pr the proverbial on Carinado uh, for saying it's not study level in air quotes there. Um, but you know what? Carinado do a really, really good job of you doing a high quality um you know, realistic representation of the aircraft. It may not be 110% accurate to the real thing, but if anybody thinks they are getting a 100% accurate rendition of an aircraft in the sim, you're kidding yourself, just saying. So I think they do an incredibly good job of putting uh, content available, making it um, accurate and accessible. And I think that's a very fine balance. I think Carinado do a really good job of doing. So just my two cents worth. Anyway, if you are wanting to pick this one up, it's coming in at the Carinado store for 40 US dollars or your regional equivalent available now. Now, another X-Plane 11 release, the guys are at Aerosoft have released their rendition of Paderborn International Airport um, for uh, X-Plane 11. So Paderborn um, is sort of a very special for airport for Aerosoft because you know, their, their headquarters is actually right next door. Um, so it's kind of cool, kind of, uh, you know, a, a fairly sort of you know, significant place for them as a developer. Um, and also hosted the German Flight Sim Conference for many, many years. And it serves as a uh, domestic connection airport, so uh, connecting to the major hubs in Frankfurt and Munich, um, as well as uh, providing an international gateway to a variety of Mediterranean destinations uh, for those wanting to get some sun away from a winter snows. Uh, so this scenery freezes a highly detailed rendition of the airport as it appears at the start of 2019. Uh, includes a wide range of um, uh, content including full implementation of PBR ground textures and HDR lighting uh, for various uh, 3D objects throughout the 
the airport as well. Full information of a variety of animations for jetways, marshallers, apron vehicles, and the nearby wind turbines are modeled and put in as well. Um, also supports winter textures via the Ter Terra Max add-on as well, which is kind of interesting. So the fact that you actually have multiple seasons then is showing the development, the, the, so the evolution of X-Plane 11 as a platform. Also supports a custom terrain mesh um, for the uh, airport and surrounding area as well. The extended photo reel also extends not only through the airport, the airport boundary, but also covers Paderborn and Delbrook City as well. So coming through, pretty, pretty looking pretty amazing for this one, coming at a very affordable price as well, coming in at twenty US dollars or your regional equivalent. Available now either direct from Aerosoft or, incidentally enough, they actually did a simultaneous release for the Steam Edition users as well. Um, though, as always, I always recommend to people that you consider using um, buying it from a direct from a retailer instead of via Steam. But if you do want to get on Steam, you can available now. Continuing on with another scenery release for X-Plane 11, the guys over at Just Sim, following uh, sort of a week after they're releasing Heraclon International Airport for the ESP platforms, have followed it up with releasing it for the X-Plane 11 platform. So looking like it's a pretty much a direct port over for this content. It's come through again, so I'm not going to go over too much because we covered it off last week. But again, as I said, comes off with highly detailed uh, airport um, objects and vehicles, uh, custom 3D objects, obviously, for all of them, high resolution texturing uh, for the, both the objects and also the ground texturing and uh, custom runway textures included as well. Fully compatible with a variety of uh, X-Plan 11 features, including HDR and PBR. So HDR and PBR, HDR lighting and PBR texturing have been included as well. Uh, full support of, really, of uh, glass reflections as well on the buildings and optimized for world traffic and X-Life traffic as well. So looking pretty cool coming in at uh, 18 US dollars or your region equivalent available from your favorite flight sim retailer now. And moving out of x plane 11, we're into Aerofly FS2 now with Tapparay making, I believe, their first foray into Aerofly FS2. Uh, and this time coming out with their release of the Canary Islands. So this scenery includes a five meter terrain mesh for, the all, for all of the Canary Islands. Uh, to go with a variety of freeware airports that have come through here as well. So um, this doesn't specifically have on uh, have any airports. It's it's just their sort of speciality, which is doing the terrain mesh and some photo reel. So you get terrain mesh, ter terrain mesh and photo reel textures for all of the Canary Islands, um, are compiled with the latest Open OpenStreetMap data. Uh, there are a variety of freeware airports available for this one, which, uh, which it provides you some links to. Um, so yeah, so just so you know, it is a it is not the airports themselves. It is just simply the terrain mesh and the photo reel of all of the islands. Uh, it does also support their full implementation of their night lights uh, suite as well. So coming in for fifteen US dollars or regional equivalent, available now from Sim Market. Alrighty, moving out of um, doing normal flight simulators, moving into a well flight simulation of a different kind, I suppose, with Tower 3D Pro releasing their first Australian airport this week. Um, so they released the Melbourne International Airport, one that I am very familiar with flying in and out of there many, many times over the last few years. Um, so um, doesn't really say much about it. I suppose it's and look, it, it never really appealed to me this thing, but um, uh, it's done in a high degree of accuracy is really all I can have, and gives you uh, for an additional airport controlling challenge. What that means, I don't really know. So I'm going to leave it to you guys who specialize in Tower 3D Pro to tell me if you're interested in that. Uh, but that's coming in at 20 US dollars or your original equivalent, available either directly from Field Air's site um, or available via Steam for your platform available now. Continuing on to simulation of a different kind this week with something that is blatantly taking off SpaceX with the release of EarthX, um, where it challenges you to become a uh, becoming a CEO of the largest rocket company in the world. So yeah, you know, at least they openly acknowledge as well in the about that they do base this off of SpaceX as well as some other companies as well. Um, this uses a very interesting sort of unique sort of uh, block sort of cartoon animated style. Um, where we sort of go through a variety of challenges where you can actually, the idea is to actually start, you know, go from a small startup and then, you know, be able to control your company and make some money, be able to start launching rockets. Um, you manage logistics, you manage employees, and you manage sometimes the fact that your rockets will go back. Uh, and not in the way that you want them to. So it's kind of interesting, kind of cool, kind of quirky. Currently in early access um, for coming in at eight US dollars. So it's not exactly a hugely expensive one. Um, 
I don't know if it's something that I'm going to be interested in. It's, it's, it's kind of quirky, kind of cool. It, it looks kind of cool, though. Like I said, it's kind of quirky, but it does look kind of cool. Um, but in a way, not sure. But yeah, could be interesting to see where it goes into the future. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, as I said, if you want to pick this one up, available now on Steam for eight US dollars or your regional equivalent, available now. Continuing on with some other rather quirky releases this week, we saw the release of Her Majesty's Ship. Um, so, uh, so okay, well, first of all, a bit of background on this one. So HMS that you see in front of the uh, uh, Royal Navy ships, or HMAS in front of Australian Navy ships, Her Majesty's uh, you know, HMAS, so uh, Her Majesty's ship, or Her Majesty's Australian ship. Uh, and, of course, the her will change for him when there is a king on the throne. But anyway... Um, this basically looks like a swashbuckling version of Bomber Crew, essentially, is what this looks like. Um, so you go through, you sort of, you know, have to uh, sort of, you know, you start off as captain, you sort of manage the your crew and various roles that they have to perform on the ship, um, as well as sort of going through and giving through a... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, forgive me. Uh, so you actually go through and actually sort of, you know, sort of manage the crew, manage their things, and make sure that they don't want to mutiny you, and that they do the, you know, practice various skills and whatever. So, um, kind of cool, kind of interesting uh, in this again, sort of very much cartoon style um, that was that's been made popular by uh, Bomber Crew. So, um, yeah, think of it as I said, think of it very much of a Bomber Crew full of ships, but it has like an interesting sort of strategic map as well with some resources and some interesting bit of the gameplay coming there. So, uh, could be interesting to see where that goes. Currently, uh, so normally available for fifteen US dollars. Currently on a launch special for about thirteen, so getting a couple of dollars off uh, if you want to get it in early access. Available now. Continuing on with another quirky release this week. And this one kind of, in a little way, reminds me a little bit of, um, oh, what's that title? Black and White. I, I Yeah, I, that was a kind of quirky but cool title. Uh, anyway, so this is the release of Godhood this week into Early Access. Um, so this title is... As you could probably imagine, it basically makes you a god, and you get to change, you get to sort of decide how you want to be a god, you know, what you want your disciples to worship, uh, how you want them to worship, and you can sort of influence them. You can't control your denizens and your worshippers directly, but you can influence their decisions and encourage them to create things or do things, whether they be good, not so good, or up to you, follow your own moral compass. So, uh, again, these games are always interesting because they're as much as about you, the user, as they are about a gameplay, um, which is kind of of interesting but it's also doing it also has a bit of a um there's an interesting uh, combat mechanic in there as well um to do with other religions so some very interesting sort of underlying themes going on here that you may not be aware of uh otherwise it goes as it says it goes through creating your own uh, religion whether you want to, want to uh, try them through whether you want to use a pre-made one or make your own um goes through manages holy sites uh, goes uh, ritual combat and uh, various uh, mythical world and it's in a very unique and very vibrant art style so yeah this this could be something of very you know, great interest. Probably not for me, but it could be interesting. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, so this one's coming in at twenty-seven US dollars, or your original equivalent for your Godhood experience. All right, and rounding out the simulation re the releases this week with with an interesting one that I, I almost wasn't going to put in here, but I, I do want to put it in because I actually. I've got mixed feelings about it. So, okay, so this is VR Lab Academy Anatomy VR. So, um, the basic premise of this is that it's a way for you to be able to interact. It's, it's, a, it's an education game. It's, it's an edu educational game. So it allows you to sort of interact with various human body parts and you can actually learn what their functions are, so to get them to look at them in 3D views and sort of, you know, sort of, and see things like, see like the, see them in action. So you can actually see sort of blood pumping through veins. You can see, you know, toxins being pulled out, you know, being washed, you know, rinsed out and pulled out of the system by the kidneys and processed through the, the, the body. So it's really interesting in a way, in, in, in some of the concepts, some of the content that's there. That That's really, really interesting. Um, however, I... I'm really not liking how they're doing it. So there's a almost a throwaway byline, the, the, the fine print, as it were, at the bottom of the shop page on Steam, which says, please note that this is a demo version with respect to the VR Lab Academy experiments. Um, 
And if you dig a little deeper and you actually go to their um, web VR Labs website, now VR Lab is actually um, they've been around for quite a few years and they've been kind of pioneering and sort of a bit of an industry leader in terms of um, VR in education. So they actually go through and they have sort of various different products um, and over the years, but. If you actually want to be able to, and they call them experiments, and I cannot find any information about what these experiments are, um, or the laboratory, but it looks like, from what I can gather between the lines, is that the visual representation where you can actually look at what the body parts are, they seem to be the lab. But if you want to be able to actually see things like those toxins being removed by the kidneys or stuff like that, that's an experiment. And you don't get those in the Steam version. It looks like you do, but you don't. Um, and if you want access to those, you have to buy the version directly from VR Lab. And here's the thing, is that it's not a one-time buy, it's a subscription service. And it's not cheap either. Um, if you want access to all the experiments, then you, you're you paying 20, 20 bucks a month. You're paying $21 a month, um, which is unfortunate and... One of the things that I, 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 I sort of really... Like, I'm a big believer in using VR for educational purposes. It absolutely has its place. It, it also can be overused, um, but at the same time, yeah, it, it very much has its place. So if you start setting the price of education, you actually start putting it out of the way of the people who need it the most. Um, and that's my concern. The fact that you know, if you actually want to be able to do... The education, if you want to do a lot of the, you know, the, the great educational benefits that come out of doing VR, then you have to fork out, you know, what is realistically a, a not insignificant amount of money. So, you know, instead of buying a game once for, you know, for you know, thirty bucks or fifty bucks or whatever, you're having to pay twenty one dollars a month, and I kind of have a problem with that. Um, you know, admittedly, you know, the argument can be made that, okay, you can get it, buy it for one month or two months and, and sort of then you don't need to switch it off and switch it back on again later. Um, so there is, of course, that argument as well, but it's education, you know, and learning, that especially the desire to learn, um, you know, whatever your age, it, it doesn't require you, you shouldn't have to require a credit card. Um, but that's a more of a bit of a personal opinion, a bit of a crusade I think I'm going on. But anyway, so I'm going to get off that high horse for now. So as I said, um... It looks interesting, but as I said, I have my concerns. And they've also specified at the moment that it is an early access title, so we will see some other things going on. So, anyway. Uh, all right, so if you are want, if you are wanting to pick this up off, off on Steam, you can pick it up, as I said, coming in normally at $4 US dollars. So not exactly, you know, it's not exactly expensive. Um, currently on a special a launch special at the moment of um, uh, 3 US dollars. But so, yeah, you can pick it up cheap at the moment. But if you want to actually get the full learning, um, then it'd be interesting to pick it up, as I said, for but you would have to go for the rather more expensive option at $21 a month. So just bear that in mind. Otherwise, uh, yeah, available now on Steam or directly from VRLabAcademy.com. And with that rather confusing news, thank you very much for joining me. That wraps up the Nova app for this week. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.